Question 2a. Predict and explain the variation in the enthalpy change of hydration for the sodium, magnesium, and aluminum ion, gases ion. So first you need to understand uh, what is the enthalpy change of hydration. Uh, so the gases ion will dissolve in water and they will form bonding. The time when they form bonding, it will release energy. So therefore, it's always exothermic. And if the attractions between the ion and water is stronger, then it's released more energy. It's more exo. So from this, uh, this trend, we know that it's actually across period, see? Across the period. From sodium to magnesium to aluminum ions. So means across the period, we know that the size is getting smaller. And the charge is increasing so for example uh, let's say size is larger positive size smaller three positive here so we know that the charge density is actually uh, increases means the attractions of the these uh, gases ion is stronger to the water so means the aluminum ion it will form a stronger bond or attractions with water release more energy means it's more exo so this is the, 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 the idea that you must have uh, before you answer. Okay, now, uh, this is the answer. Um, the hydration enthalpy, uh, is, uh, enthalpy change increases across the period. Uh, so means it uh, uh, becomes more XO. Huh? So this enthalpy increases uh, across the period. So what is the reason it's increased? Uh, because first, the charge increases and the ionic radius decreases. Uh, so as I told you just now, charge is getting more from positive, two positive, three positive. And the ionic radius uh, becomes smaller. So therefore, the charge density of ion increases. Uh, I love to put this here. So therefore, this is the, the one that uh, gives uh, attractions to this uh, uh, water. Right? So therefore, attractive forces, uh, you can actually say that is the ion dipole. Because when the gases ion dissolve in water, the these cations, uh, of course, ion and the dipole is the water. Uh, so because water, we know that uh, it's just a dipole. So uh, it's uh, okay, like this H2O. So it's partial negative, partial positive. So when this water surrounding this uh, this uh, cat, uh, this uh, gases ion or this cat ion uh, so it will form this ion dipole bonding uh, so of course the partial negative will uh, uh, attracted to this uh, uh, this uh, cat ion right uh, if you not really understand about this ion dipole uh, you still can give attractive forces but it's better for you to put uh, ion dipole uh, so between the ions and water increases, becomes stronger, release more energy. Uh, part B. Figure 2.1 shows an incomplete energy cycle. Uh, so for this energy cycle, let's see. Uh, uh, we started from this. Uh, uh, let's start from this uh, line A. Uh, magnesium correct solid. Line B is the magnesium gases ion and the correct gases ion so this line b point to this line a uh, so this is uh, obviously latest energy gases ion now they combined and form the solid right so this is the latest energy of magnesium correct and uh, for this um, uh, from this line a to line c you, you can see the enthalpy change is uh, uh, enthalpy change of solution of magnesium correct means the salt here dissolve in water so means uh, plus water uh, dissolve in water and uh, form this aqueous solution of uh, magnesium uh, two uh, and this uh, correct so uh, because this one dissolve you form this uh, ion solution okay magnesium and the correct uh, solution so um, therefore now we know that uh, from uh, actually it's the same uh, for this uh, this um, 
uh, magnesium gaseous ion and the chloride gaseous ion. Since we already know that uh, it will form this, uh, this uh, magnesium and the chloride solution. So the gaseous ion now also need to uh, react. Uh, uh, if you uh, react in the water uh, and get hydrated uh, to form this, uh, this uh, solution. So uh, they will form the same solution, uh, gases ion uh, with the water, uh, so it get hydrated uh, and form same solution okay, as the salt. Okay, so this is the, the full uh, this, uh, energy cycle, uh, which involves uh, the three energies, the latest energy, enthalpy change of hydration and solution. So we can link them together uh, later. Okay, so this one done. Now, uh, next part, uh, complete the line C uh, in figure two, already done, yeah? And uh, use the both words and symbol, identify the change to in figure two. Uh, I already, this one I already told you. Uh, so you just explain, uh, just follow the change one and three, uh, how they explain. So you just put here, uh, end up with change of hydration of magnesium ion and the chloride ion. Uh, so remember, uh, this one is uh, this, uh, the, Enthalpy change of hydration of magnesium ion plus two times uh, of uh, enthalpy change of hydration of chloride. Uh, so it's two times here. Part three. Uh, calculate the value for latest energy uh, of magnesium chloride. Uh, and you need to select the data from the table. There, there are a lot of data here. Uh, because now it's asking latest energy. So what see what we can get uh, from this table. Uh, we try to uh, use the, the fastest method or faster way. If let's say we get the enthalpy change of hydration for both uh, ions and there is a enthalpy change of solutions for the magnesium chloride. Uh, so now it's quite straightforward. Uh, we can use uh, these three enthalpy for the uh, latest energies calculation. So first, you need to know the delta X solution. Uh, okay, the relation is this. Yeah. Okay, you can actually get from this uh, this energy cycle. So when we use uh, latest energy plus uh, this uh, enthalpy change of the solution, so it's equal to the this enthalpy change of hydration. So therefore, we know that if you want to get the enthalpy change of solution. So you must use the hydration minus the latest energy, right? So therefore, we have this uh, relation. Uh, so the solution, the solution of the magnesium correct must equal to what? Hydration enthalpy minus the latest energy. Uh, here you need to uh, be careful. The hydration enthalpy, you need to sum up the uh, enthalpy change of hydration for magnesium ion and correct. So, uh, and the correct must be two times. So it's a uh, negative 1920 here, uh, plus two times of negative uh, 364. So minus the latest energy. So rearrange, uh, you should get negative 2493 kilojoule per mole. So this is how you do. Uh. Um, for the part C, define entropy. Uh, entropy is quite easy. Eh? Uh, number of possible arrangement of particles in the system. Uh, it could be any system uh, and of course it can be in energy form. So for example, uh, if we compare a solid and a gas. So solid uh, always uh, uh, it has a lesser arrangement. Gas always has more arrangement because gas is uh, can move to all direction so therefore we say that the entropy of gas is uh, higher the gas is much higher and the solid is is lower this is the the general uh, the exp uh, explanation about this entropy huh? um, now for the part d uh, this is a calculations of the gibbs energy uh, so enthalpy change of the solutions of compound Z is given, uh, which is a positive 26. And the entropy change of solution Z 
at the same temperature is positive 52. Calculate the Gibbs uh, free energy. First, you must know the Gibbs equation. Delta G equal to delta H minus T delta S. Very important, yeah? Uh, after that, you just substitute the value. Uh, but there is uh, one part that you must be careful. Uh, because the Gibbs energy is in kilojoule per mole, and the entropy is joule. So you need to convert the joule to kilojoule. So 52, you need to uh, divide by 1000, convert the joule to kilojoule. Uh, then you can get the correct answer. So the delta H uh, is 26 given, minus 298. Uh, so 25 degrees C, use Kelvin, uh, 298 times uh, 52. Uh, so this is the entropy, over 1000. Right? So you should get positive 10.5 kilojoule per mole. Okay, part E1, you should answer in the part D. Uh, answer in your part D means uh, you should refer to this one. Uh, is uh, okay, endo or uh, exo. Because the calculation here, the Gibbs is uh, endo, means uh, this is uh, non a, it's not a spontaneous reaction. Uh, means uh, it's actually not really working, uh, not really soluble. Uh, now, uh, you should answer in part D, I predict whether or not the Z is soluble in water at 25 degrees C. Of course, it cannot. So as long the G, delta G uh, is, uh, is uh, negative, so it's insoluble. Uh, it will start to dissolve when the delta G is negative. It's spontaneous. Uh, so this one, the Z is insoluble in water uh, because the delta G is positive. That's your explanation. Part two, uh, predict whether this Z become more or less soluble as the water is heated from 25 to 95 degrees C. Uh. So then you should use the, or you must use actually, uh, the Gibbs equation. So to find out, okay, now, because uh, the delta H is already given, uh, is endo, uh, and uh, this uh, entropy also given is endo. So means when temperature increases, so the delta H is going to minus a larger value, no? Means uh, at the end, uh, the delta G is uh, more exo. So what you can say here is uh, Z will be more soluble when it's get heated because the T delta S, this part, yeah, this part, T delta S is positive. When temperature increases, uh, so delta H minus a larger value, the G it can be negative later. Therefore, it's spontaneous. Okay, that's all. Thank you.